Welcome to the Focus on Why podcast. I'm Amy Rowlandson and I ask my guests one simple question, why? Focusing on the importance of why, I share with you the relatable, uplifting and inspiring conversations I have with people from all walks of life. This podcast will encourage you to focus on your why to enable and empower you to achieve the success you desire. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why. Before we start, I would like to draw your attention to my weekly email newsletter, Friday Focus. Each Friday, I focus on one topic with one action arising. The link to sign up is in the show notes or head over to amyrolinson.com and sign up right now. Today on Focus and Why, I am joined by Helen Adams. Helen, hello, how are you doing? Hi, Amy. Thank you. It's lovely to see you. And hi to all the listeners as well. I'm doing really well. Thank you. Great. And where are you joining from today? I am joining from Manchester in the UK. And have you always lived in Manchester? No, I've travelled around a bit. So I've also lived in Wales and I've lived in the Midlands as well. But Manchester is home to me. And why is it home? Um, I just have a lovely feeling of being here, that people are lovely, the area is lovely. I live in a nice part, so I live near the canal, so I've got the nature nearby, and I'm a 20-minute car ride away from town, so I've got the best of both worlds, so I absolutely love it. Perfect, love it. So what is it that you're doing at the moment? What keeps you busy? Okay, so at the moment, um, I work in my business, which is called the Female Business Revolution. And what I do is I work with female entrepreneurs of all ages who are wanting to create the income that they really want, not what society thinks they should have, not what um, other people tell them that they're allowed to have. You know, that income that they really dreamt of when they were little girls, when they had no limits on anything that they could do. And the way that I teach them to do it is totally different. So I get them to unlearn and relearn everything they were taught about money, and I get them to tap into their intuition to do it because... Your intuition is your best friend. And once you can use it consciously, once you can use it powerfully, it changes your life and your business like night and day. It just 10Xs everything and makes everything so much easier and so much in flow. So that's what I teach them to do. And I absolutely love it. And how did you come to this being your thing? So um, it was actually a life journey. Because um, if I go back right from the beginning, and then I won't bore you too long with this, because as you'll see, I've been around the clock a bit. So um, obviously, there were points in my life all the way through where I knew that I wanted something. And things were happening that always sort of made me turn away from my true path and follow what other people said I should. So in the beginning, it was following what mum and dad wanted me to do, getting the nine to five jobs, studying instead of going out there and following my heart. And then it happened during my working life as well, because I had this really, there were two big ambitions I had. I wanted to go on stage and either be a speaker or do something powerful on stage. And I also wanted to teach. And the coaching brought those two things together. So it was absolutely ideal. And I think when you know what you really want to do, you have that different feeling about it. It's like all the cells in your body light up. And you know then that you're on the right path. But with all of society's conditioning, you keep second guessing yourself until, you know, this message comes through your life over and over again with different events, different situations. And it just says to you, you know, wake up. This is the truth. This is what you need to be doing. And it took me a long time to discover that really and accept it. But when I did I knew then that that was my mission to spread that message with others and then help them to make it a truth in their lives as well. And what have you achieved since doing this, Helen? So I've had some amazing results with clients. I've had clients launching podcasts. I've had clients doing best-selling books. Um, My last client um, who came on my program, she made £12,000 in eight weeks and then the nice thing about it is what I do it works all across the board so talking about my program I had that lady who made 12,000 pounds 
and she was um, a Tony Robbins coach. And then all the way to the other end of the scale, I had a lady who'd only been in business for three, four months and she'd made £5,000. So um, I love the fact that I can help female entrepreneurs right across the board with the stuff that I teach. It's really exciting to me. And what's the mission? What's the big picture vision that you have? You talked about being on the stage and, and that lighting you up of being who you are through your coaching work. Yes, my big, big mission with the coaching work, within a 10-year time span, I would like to empower 1 million women all around the globe, 1 million female entrepreneurs all around the globe to create the money that they really want so that they're stepping into their power, they're being strong around money, and they're also able to use it to create an impact they want and enjoy more time having the lifestyle they want. Because at the end of the day, you know, we came here to live a first-class life. We didn't come here to be extras in our own movies. And you talked about having been round the clock, which is a lovely expression to sort of say that you're in your more mature years. Yeah. <laughs> so, but what is it that you are passionate about and why these one million women about money what is it about money that you've got a story about with well in my own story um it as as i said once again it took me a long time to realize but um we complicate money too much and in my experience there's a very very simple explanation so when i was doing things that were lighting up my soul and giving me joy the bank balance was increasing. And when I was listening to other people's views of how I should be or living a life that wasn't truly me, all the money would start dwindling away. And because my conditioning was so strong, it took me until I was nearly 50 years of age to accept that, work it out and say, no, mum and dad's not, what mum and dad said isn't true, what society says isn't true. The real crux of everything is listening to your soul, listening to that voice within and having the courage to follow it. And eventually I did. And was it a culmination of a lot of different inputs or was it there was a particular mentor or a book that gave you that light bulb moment? With the with the actual realisation about the money, um, it wasn't so much a mentor. It was um, the events sort of adding themselves up and piecing them together. So I remember one time I was stood in the kitchen and I had a tin of beans and I had to make that tin of beans last for three meals till the next money was coming on. And I sort of had this voice saying to me, you know, you're made for more than this. You need to go out there and help those women. And from then on, the first thing I did was to hire myself a new coach. I didn't have any money, but I trusted. And then a couple of days later, the money showed up. And then from there, everything started to change. And was it was it a particular well-known coach or was it just somebody in your network? She's in my network, but she's fairly well known. Her name is Jojo Ellen, and she's one half of the female preneurs. So she is well known. They're doing a lot of them. They changed their business. They've had a really good journey as well. They started off as coaching people for network marketing, and then they had a complete about turn. And now they've got their own um, spiritual coaching school. And the stuff they're doing in there is phenomenal, using all sorts of modalities. And people are getting big leaps and everything. So it's amazing. And it is amazing how you sort of start off on one route and then you realise that it, it's not quite who you are. And you've mentioned this several times that you, you weren't listening to the heart, that you were just following the path that others were recommending. Yeah. So tell me, following your heart now, what is it that, that is aligned for you? What else happens being not just a work, but other things in your life? Um, you just feel more sure of who you are as a person. And then you don't have that fear about things going wrong. Your outlook changes. So um, instead of fearing what goes wrong, you sort of acknowledge that, yeah, you're going to have fear at every point on your journey. But your job is to walk with that fear and overcome it rather than seeing it as a block and worrying about things. And um, I find with other areas of my life as well now, they seem a lot more in flow 
you know, it's not like everything's a struggle, which it used to be at some points in my life. Um, I seem to be able to work out things easier as well. So on that side of it, it's helped me too. And when you look in the mirror, and, and I'm not just talking about what you see as part of the, the reflection, I'm talking about, you know, the metaphorical mirror here. What do you see or what do you choose to see in the mirror, Helen? So I choose to see myself as the best version of me. So my highest self. And um, I do my best every day to step into her because as well as that making me feel good, that gives everybody around me the best experience of me. And um, I don't think they should have anything less. I think I should be able to give my 100% to everyone who needs me. And as part of what you're doing, Helen, do you have a, a legacy that you want to have or be known for or leave behind you? Yeah, definitely. So I want all these young girls who are coming after me to have their norm as being able to be, do and have whatever they want and following their heart to be their default mode instead of the conditioning so that they can really go out there and do what they want to do. There are so many women out there with so much to give inside them and a lot of them are suppressing it. And um, I want to be one of the main people who helps them get rid of this suppression, helps them to be truly themselves and goes out there and live that first class life that I was talking about. I love the idea of a first class life, first class life. What, what is it about the the living legacy piece? Because this is clearly something that you are you've come to this point in your life and you're realizing it and you don't want it just to be a case of once you've gone, this is happening. But whilst you're here, you're seeing these results. Yeah, definitely. So um, that is starting to come through with um, the people that I'm coaching at the moment. But obviously, we want to take this to much greater levels, hence the um, million, million woman um, goal. But also, if I could incorporate something into that, which would um, help younger girls, say teenage girls, to start that going or maybe collaborate with people who are doing that already, that would be massive because when girls are impressionable, that's really when you need to get them so that they're not wasting all those years of time and energy trying to work out who they are and then um, apologising for it. So how are you going to monitor your one million? How are you going to keep a tab on all of these people that you're helping? Um, it's going to be a big, difficult. So obviously the, the beginning ones are the ones who would work with me one-to-one -one or come into my groups. But then when I go out there and um, when we're allowed to um, start doing the speaking on stages again and going into the conference, I suppose I could only really say um, in that sense with how many people have attended or what messages I've got back or everything. But I, I will find a way of doing it. It's just um, doing it as I'm going along at the minute, which isn't 100% ideal, but um, at least every day I'm knowing that people are being impacted, which is great news at this stage. So what would you say if you're looking back at the pivotal moments of, of your, your life where you saw the pathway split and one way would have been the, the follow your route, your own heart, and the other one was not following other people's paths, what would you have changed? When I was back at that stage, I would have probably, I'd have probably just gone for it. I would have had something in me that said, you know, okay, I'm going to try this. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter because at least I'll have tried. I think at that stage, I was still too hurt up with other people's judgment of me and whether I'd be laughed at or ridiculed or people would have said to me, you know, um, who does she think she is? Her head's always in. The People did say that about me quite a bit. You know, they'd said that I'm a dreamer, my head's in the clouds, I'm too optimistic. I had all that stuff. But at the end of the day, those people don't pay my bills. So optimism and dreaming have always been an empowering way of living for you. Yeah, they have. And I don't think they're bad things. 
a, a lot of people say stop dreaming. I mean, when you were in school, did the teacher ever say to you, Amy, stop dreaming or stop looking out the window? Oh, and this one, um, the answer's not on my face. Have you had that when you're looking at the teacher's face? Like, you know, you're like you're in a sort of dream state. And, you know, dreaming is part of our identity. When we go to school, all that's squashed out of us. And we need to be able to learn to dream once again, because those dreams are the thing that keep us going. And when we have the courage to follow our dreams, those are the things that make us grow into the best versions of ourselves so we can serve everyone else in the best possible way. Yeah, I was definitely told off during school for daydreaming. I was a big daydreamer. But now, having sort of know, understood the more about the neuroscience, I was actually tapping into a really creative area. So I, yeah. you know, I don't dismiss it now. Definitely. You know, we need more of this stuff going on. We definitely do. And yeah, look where you are now. So obviously dreaming has worked for you too. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's an incredibly powerful thing to do is to take those moments out in your day and have a daydream, you know, watch the, the raindrops go down the window, whatever it is. And yes. as you say, the teacher saying to you, you know, stop l looking at me because the answer's not on my face. Or, or they might say, you know, it's, the answer's not on the ceiling because people would look up. And actually, yes. now, now I understand that that's sort of retrieving information when your eyes yes. look up you, you are retrieving information or you're constructing information so that makes perfect sense from an NLP perspective that that's why people would look up so yeah. you know and and you have that wonderful phrase of look up all the time because that is a positive way of being is to to look up and look at look at up at the sky just to give that uh, ideation face so yeah it, it, I'm with you Helen here it's it's crazy isn't it how our thoughts were, and dreams were crushed as as young uns, and mm -hmm. you know we have these this ability now to turn it all around. And you're you're talking about getting into that impressionable age sooner and helping them to understand more about who they are. What does focus on why mean to you? It means keep your attention on your purpose. Know what your purpose is. And um, this is a bit of a funny one because not everybody knows. I think your purpose is something that it just happens that you know. It's not something you go out and physically look for. So when I got these um, messages about, you know, this is what I need to do, I'm thinking, right, okay, this is what I was brought here to do. This is, I mean, I don't know what other people believe, but when you come back to earth, some people say, you come back to earth each time for a purpose and I think this time, this is what I came back to do. So once you've realised that, your whole life changes round. You're thinking, right, OK, like 50 and a little few years have gone. Now I need to spend the rest of my life making sure that I do this because this is why I'm here. This is what I'm for, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me about you being a being a coach yourself who coaches you now do you always have someone who's taking you higher um yeah I have different coaches um the last coach I had was a lady called Lizzie Vince and um she's yeah she's even changed so she's gone a lot she's opened up her spiritual side a lot more than when we were first together and then um, she had another coach who was in our group and that other coach who was in our group, she's completely gone into this thing about following you. So she doesn't even do these basic logical things. She just like sits there and dreams and then she gets this action and she gets money and people think, what the hell is she doing? But it's actually working. Like one day she'll say, like, I've done £2,000. And then another day I had a new £4,000 client. And this is all done by the effortless way. But when you think about it, it's hard in a different way because you just have to block everything out and totally rely on trust and nothing but trust to make those things work. And a lot of people can't do that still. So your passion for teaching, was it something that you ever followed or did you go down that route before? Yeah, I did. I spent a lot of years actually as a teacher. So I taught um, children, adults, 
all abilities. And my very favourite thing that I did as a teacher was I started a children's orchestra from scratch. And then the first year that we had it, we had two violins, two recorders, a drum and a tambourine. And then three years later, just before I left that school, there were 10 violins, three flutes, three clarinets, a drum kit, a xylophone, a triangle and a cello. And I put them into a school competition and they won the silver medal on their first goal. And I was so proud of them. If people ask me, what are the most successful things that you did in your life? The orchestra is always up there because that was, I was really massive for me. I loved it. And what tore you away from music? So it wasn't so much the music, but that particular school that I was in, um, I'd done everything that I could do there. And I thought, I want a new challenge. And this is really funny because, you know, you get these signs. Um, A couple of days later, after I'd left that school, I was in this bookshop and this book kept standing out to me. And the book was called Be Your Own Life Coach. And I kept on looking at it. And then I started walking out the shop and something inside me said, no, go back and buy that book. So I got the book. I took it home. I was hooked. And then straight after that, I did my coaching qualifications. So... That was a big turning point for me, following a sign there. I love that. And I love that a book was just sort of talking to you there. I have that. That's why I can't go into bookshops so much now, because I end up with about 20 when I walk out again. Yeah, that makes sense. You have to be so careful. But going back to the music again, um, I'm still doing that as a sideline now. I've got a piano at home and um, I'm teaching children to play the piano. And then next year... I want to get my samba band going again because that was really fun. I love I love it. It's brilliant. So creativity and just sort of ingenuity, but also, as you say, just understanding that what's your passion, you know, what, what it was that was speaking to you all of that time and and having the confidence and the the courage, as you said, to to put on that brave face and and say, this is what I want to achieve. This is what I'm going to do. And, you know, blocking out those voices in your head, which, you know, you said at one point where your mum and dad, how did you do that how did you twist those voices into positive voices for you um how did I twist them so I just I just had to say to myself mum and dad are not me I had to realize that those voices were coming from outside rather than my inner self speaking so it was almost like I was putting a shield a sort of invisible shield on any of the voices that were coming that were not from me and getting them to sort of bounce off the shield and just make my inner voice stronger and stronger and say, this is the one, this is the real one. It's coming from inside you and just reminding myself of the difference. I love that. So I love you've got an invisible shield. You're teaching people how to learn to dream. It sounds wonderful. And you are, of course, being your higher self every day when you look into into that mirror or not even looking into the mirror that you're just aware of that's who you want to be and who you choose to be. So, Helen, it's been a delight having you on the show. How would you like to, well, how, how could people get in contact with you first? So um, they can get in contact with me. All my links are on Linktree. So the link is l-i-n-k-t-r dot double e and then it's forward slash helen louise adams so you'll get all my links on there you'll get my facebook instagram youtube twitter and also my brand new pro well it's not a brand new program my signature program which is the eight weeks to 12k which um, i'm enrolling people on at the moment and this is going to make the big, big massive changes for women out there So, Helen, thank you so much for coming on Focus on Why. How would you like to leave the audience today? So, thank you, Amy. I would like to say to everyone who's watching, whatever time of year it is, wherever you are, don't wait for something else. If you've got a dream in your heart, take that first step now to achieve it, because at the end of the day, we only have now. How has this conversation had an impact on you? What value have you received from tuning in? What are your reflections with actions? Please take a moment to leave me an Apple podcast or Spotify review sharing how Focus on Why has made a difference to you today. Remember, the conversation doesn't end here. To keep it going, simply connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook or Twitter or join the Focus on Why Facebook group. All the links are in the show notes. 
have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why.